G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. I've brought out with me my DD Multicam Frontline Hammock. If you have followed my channel for a while you've seen this before, but since then I've made a couple of modifications to it. I've changed it a little bit to make it work better for me. And I'm also going to add a snake skin to it. Originally this came with a uh, like a flat nylon rope that went through the end of the hammock and you took it up both sides and wrapped it around and tied a knot up at the tree but what that meant to me was every time I needed to adjust my hammock I'd have to undo the knot adjust it do the knot back up check it and then again do the same at the other end so I replaced it with a continuous loop which is a lot lighter and instead of having a rope I have now replaced it with I did have whoopee slings but I've replaced it with a strap with a buckle on it which means I can adjust it and the strap goes around the tree and works as a tree protector or your tree hogger and I've got that on both ends now so that means when it comes to adjusting it all I have to do is give the rope a pull or adjust it and let it down to get the desired angle or the, some people say they've got their angle at 20, 25 and others have got theirs at 30, 35 whichever finds uh, the most comfortable but the general rule is a 30 degree angle will give you one of the most comfortable lays you can get but like I said you adjust it to suit you but then over that, let's get back to it, I've made a structural ridge line and I've just pulled that over the top or pulled the continuous loop around the loop at the end of the ridge line. And I'll do the same with it down that end. Which will bring it here and it'll give me the right lay, which at the moment it's not. As you can see, we've got a bit of a gap between this end and that end. Now this hammock is 2.7 meters in length and they recommend your structural ridge line being around 83% of that length to give you the ideal lay. So that now makes this ridge line uh, 2.24 meters in length. But before I connect it to that end, I've made another modification. And that is I have put a grommet in the section where the spreader bar comes through. So what I'll do now is I'll take you back to me making a hole, installing the grommet, showing you how I did it, and then I'll come back. First thing I'm doing is Three punch a hole about centre, or as good a hole as possible. I'm just using these leather hole punch. It's not the best. I did try it on the other end. What I'll do is about centred. This is the centre loop where the uh, stiffener goes out on the bug net to hold it up. So I'm just going to do it about halfway down below that one. So there we've got halfway down. And give it as good a squeeze as possible. Give it a twist, see if that helps cut it. I did, oh, yeah straight through this time. I did do the other end and I still had the material left so actually I'm gonna to have to remember that when I use these to give it a twist to get a clean hole. Next to get the grommets. Now these have got a black backing on them but the actual washer that comes with them is just silver 
So when this folds over, the inside of that is still partially black. But it's not as good as this side. But then with the pressure from here, it did slightly uh, mark the other end. So let's get this on again. I'll put that through the hole I made. And these are five mil uh, grommets. Eyelet grommets. So let's put a washer over the top. And I'll slowly bring that down and then give it a squeeze. And that's it. But as you can see, any paint that was on the inside isn't there now. And there uh, you can see where some of the actual paint has come off. A bit closer so you can see it there now. Uh, I think it doesn't matter if you're going to use a coloured one or just a plain silver one. The brass ones I have found when using this machine or any hand press do have a tendency to uh, split and end up with sharp. Where these steel ones you can just about feel it but it's still a nice clean finish. So there you go, it's a grommet on either end for the structural ridge line to go through. Okay, welcome back. And as you saw in the video back then, I put this below the centre strap on the spreader bar section. So what I'm going to do now is, the structural ridge line I made, I'm going to put it through this end, take it down, put it through the other end, put it over the uh, continuous loop I've got there, then reattach the hammock. So there you go, before I pull the bungee, you can see this is already holding the bug net up. So I've got the bungee here, and I'm just going to take that up to a strap, and then I'll do the same the other end, and then I'll adjust it to make it fit properly. Now put the spreader bars in. I've just in this end and the other end now to where the knot is to put more tension on the actual bug net because it was actually hanging a little bit saggy on either side so now I've tightened that up a bit more let's have another look
That's better. We do have a bit of sag at either end and on the sides of the bug net. That's what it's if I laid it at a flatter lay at the angle. That's better. The bug net is up here, still away from my face. That side is still away. And this side, we've got a bit of a tension there. A lane like this is still, what's that, four or five inches away from my face. So that does work. And like I said, we've got these ends here hanging down now. There you go, you see it hanging at the peak. And it's the same down at the foot end. So I'll be honest, I went out today looking at sewing machines and I'm going to teach myself how to sew. And what I'm thinking of doing is putting a small round patch on here with another grommet to bring the actual ridge line to the inside. So I'll be able to pull that back and the same at the foot end to make it a bit tighter and work better. Well, having this ridge line has made it a lot easier to actually put the hammock up without any messing around. So the next thing now before I go is I'm going to put on the snake skin and then I'm going to pack away. Okay, that's the snake skin ready to go. If you're wondering, I should put the spreader bar through here and on top of the ridge line. So that way the spreader bar is just lifting that ridge line up, uh, the actual bug net up a bit uh, higher with the line pushing the spreader bar up. The DD snake skin is only a one piece one as you can see. And looking at it, this end is a little bit wider than that end to allow for your hammock to go inside. And how I found that out was when I started with this end, I began to struggle because this end was a had slimmer but that all works that's my hammock in there with the structural ridge line that works nice I'm happy with that now let's see if I can get it all back and the actual hammock bag it came in Force some of the air out down the end and fold it in half again. So that's in quarters now. Let's see how we go.
no, not huffing and puffing, so that did go in quite easy. Now the two spider bars, put them down this side here. There you go, it went in quite easy, even in the snake skin. Not as easy as out of the skin, because out of the skin you could push it down in the corners, but that still went in pretty well, that did. Laying quite flat there. What I do with my straps is where the loops at the ends make it easier. I've just put a carabiner and as it goes around a tree, I'll just hook it through the carabiner. Done. A lot easier. And keep threading the strap all the way through itself. Here's the buckles I use for tightening and untightening. These are made out of titanium and I got them from Dutchware. Make sure there's no ends, don't want to crawl in on my neck and bite in. That all looks good. Got one fallen branch there. So I don't think this will be an area to hang your hammock and stay for overnight. So there it is, the DD Hammock Frontline, with my modifications on it. And like I said, I am going to learn how to sew, and I'm going to put two patches, one on either end, or probably uh, two on either end, back, back on either side of the bug net, and stitch it on, and put another grommet on there, and bring the uh, structural ridge line through the two grommets, well, in one end and out the other end. I've got to see the smallest grommets I can get that are big enough for the ridge line to fit through. And when I've done that, I'll make another video. I've actually put the two patches on either end and putting a hole through, sewing it and fitting the ridge line and show you if there's any difference. I can imagine there is going to be a couple of inches difference with the height of the bug net. But at the same time I might even attach a loop on each of the uh, ends to the two patches I put on where the grommet is. So I can just pull the ends back uh, gently with some bungee cord. Just a light one so it's not putting any pressure on, or hardly any pressure on the bog net because I don't want a chance ripping it. Especially when it's probably going to be one of my first sewing attempts. I might even practice and make a uh, I was thinking of a uh, gear sling to go under one of my other hammocks and then I'll 
make the next modification to this, the DD frontline hammock. So if you've enjoyed this video and you're new to my channel, please go down below and click on the subscribe button. Hit that bell button next to it so you can be notified of all future videos and also click on the like button. So the more subscribers and likes and views I get, the better my channel will do. And if you are already a subscriber again, I thank you very much. I really do appreciate you subscribing to my channel, following me and leaving the nice comments a lot of you do. So I nearly went over then. So until next time, get out there, have some fun and take care.